Hello, I'm JW. This time I have some contactors to have a look at. Uh, here they are. And these have been sent in by Andrew. They actually came out of a working installation and they've been in service for apparently 15 years. Now one of them has actually got a fault inside, which is obviously the reason for replacing them, but the others have got a certain amount of heat damage and you see the plastic is sort of breaking away and on brittle on the side. So uh, we'll open these up and have a look inside. So here are the four contactors. And a contactor basically is a uh, electromagnet inside which operates uh, one or more sets of contacts and functionally very similar to relays. I've already done a video on that so uh, link to that in the usual place. Now uh, according to that came with these, uh, these have been energised for around 15 years so uh, obviously quite a long time there. And the one that's faulty is the one with the two normally closed contacts, so that will be this one here. And apparently one of those has actually jammed in the open position, so obviously not uh, working correctly. And uh, we can see on this one uh, there's a small amount of heat damage on the side there, it's just sort of slightly melted on there. This larger one, actually a lot of uh, yellowing, it's gone brittle, obviously it's broken away on the side. And again these two, you see there's quite a lot of browning on the sides there and also on that one. And again that's broken away there and actually cracked on this one. Now this is one of the disadvantages of contactors in that the magnetic coil, which you can see inside here, does get warm in operation. So of course over a long period of time it will cause uh, some heat damage to the plastic. Now uh, in terms of that, it's uh, not much you can actually do about that. And certainly if these are going to be energy used for long periods of time, they are going to heat up and of course uh, get fairly warm. Now some contactors you can get which are actually low power versions, which use uh, somewhat less power for the actual coil but inevitably they're all going to heat up due to losses within the magnetic winding. So what we're going to do is open these up and we'll have a look at this one which is the one that's uh, basically failed in the open position, or at least one of the contacts has failed. But we'll have a look inside the others as well. Now these are actually uh, either glued or clipped or whatever together. They don't appear to have any rivets or any other obvious fixing so I'll just have a go at uh, prying these apart and then we can see what's inside. So I've just loosened the covers on those. So uh, have a look at these uh, MEM ones first. And uh, these are basically going to be very similar in size, just one's got more contacts than the other one. And a few parts uh, of course got damaged and were left over, so that does happen when dismantling stuff. So have a look inside this one. This one on the front here just got the coil here, the A1 and A2, and then we've got the contacts at the top and the bottom there, so a fairly straightforward arrangement. And inside there we've got the terminals there, the top and bottom just screw type things where the wires of course, would go in at either end for the contacts. And the ones for the coil of course much smaller because that's only just powering the piece in the middle. And we can see the winding of the magnetic core there. And this is one of the actual pieces of the magnetic core. So it's just a laminated uh, arrangement there. And uh, there'll be another one just down in the bottom inside. Now just remove the actual terminals from the top and the bottom and we can see down inside here where the actual contact are that do the switching and this is the say, magnetic part here and as that moves you see it's moving inside the say, holes at the back here so it will move in and out obviously to open and close the contacts as the magnetic coil is energised and obviously attracts the pieces at the back and again we can see down in the other side there a similar arrangement. So basically that's where the switching occurs down there and then you've got say two in at the top and two out at the bottom. Now here's the actual coil so nothing uh, too surprising there, it's just literally just a coil of enameled coupled wire, so insulated. I've got a little uh, capacitor here just attached across those to uh, reduce any switching noise when the power is applied and of course disconnected that ultimately it is just a coil. And um, we see there's a spring here in the back there. So of course that's what will return it to the position once the coil has been de-energized. But essentially it's going to be the magnetic core like that. So in one position there, obviously a part held there by the spring here. And then when the coil is energized, then that will pull those pieces closer together. It's also got this red piece here, which is actually an indicator that shows through the front panel to say when it's on or off, but it's essentially just attracting the two bits together and of course they just spring apart when the power is removed. And then in the back here we can see those contacts there which were just joined between the 
terminals at the top and the terminals at the bottom. So it's just a sort of straight through connection on both sides when it's in the on position and of course in off position then they're not connected. And we can see down in there just got little pins or contact pieces welded onto the end of the copper pieces which come straight through to the terminals at the top and the bottom. Here's one of the actual uh, contact pieces there and you see it's just a shaped piece of copper and it's got that little uh, stud there just to either weld it or braze or whatever onto the end to form the actual contact face. It's going to be more durable than the copper itself. So not a huge amount in these things, they are relatively straightforward and I say the disadvantage of course is the heat that this thing will generate when it's energised because obviously there is a certain resistance there and it's not going to be a perfect inductor so of course there are some losses involved but uh, that's pretty much the deal with that one. And the coil connections are actually on the side here so it's just one here and then one there, capacitor across those two say, to reduce any sort of switching noise as it's turned on and more importantly turned off. Now this is the uh, four pole version so it's the same as the other except we've got four terminals at the top and bottom but again it's going to be the same arrangement so it's going to be these pairs of terminals connected together in the on position, coil on the side again there with the A1 and A2 and again very similar in size, we've got the uh, magnetic piece here and then the coil of course is going to be on the sides there as with the other one and again it's just going to move the back piece in and out as the thing is activated and deactivated. And again we can see down inside there we've got the actual contacts down there so again it's just going to join between basically one piece here sort of on this uh, right hand side and then if you look on the other side there you know, it's just going to join to this one or corresponding piece on the bottom and again those will just move in and out as the thing is activated and deactivated. And again in the bottom here again it's pretty much the same deal so we've got the uh, little contact points uh, on the end of the copper bars there and those come in and it's essentially this piece at the bottom which moves in and out from the magnet so that in the retracted position obviously it doesn't connect through but then when it's moved forwards uh, basically it comes up to contact on the back of the strips coming in from either side. Here's the Hager contactor. This is a two pole as well so I've got the uh, two terminals at the top and again the bottom so again it's just going to be those pair connected and those pair connected when it's in the on position and again the coil contacts are here on this one at the bottom and the top. This is quite a lot physically smaller, this is mainly because it handles less power, this is good for up to 4 kilowatts as it says on the front here and then the double module one we just saw is actually up to 8.6 so it's purely a question of the contact size so of course bigger contacts and uh, bigger terminals going through means it can handle more power but um, this one again is going to be fairly similar inside. There's an interesting arrangement for the contacts for the coil here which are actually in this plastic lid and so they just come through onto these metal bits on the back and then when that's placed over the other piece it actually goes onto these pieces here which are basically spring-loaded bits on the side which connect to the coil so you've got one at the top here and then at the bottom you know, you've got the other similar arrangement there so the coil is literally just resting on these spring-loaded pieces which are pressed against the actual terminals in the top and bottom of the plastic case. Now this one has uh, browned significantly, which this has been getting fairly hot. Uh, see it's actually cracked on this side and if we actually press that you'll see it's incredibly brittle, it just busts right through. Same on that side. And uh, have a look inside again, it's similar to the other, we've got the coil here in the middle which is going to be enameled copper wire and that's going to be wound around this uh, laminated core and you can again see you've got the two parts there which will slide in and out like that to open and close the contacts. And the contacts in this one, see them down in the bottom here, so it's just going to be a continuous piece from here to there, uh, again from the uh, other four the same. And on the back of this part here, this is what actually moves, got a little strip of copper there with the points uh, welded on either end. So in one position of course those are going to be open and then when the uh, thing actually is pressed against those it will just join that pair together and of course that pair together. So uh, quite a again, similar arrangement to the other and it's in this case it's going to be rigid at the front and then that back piece there is what will actually move 
in and out to open and close the contacts. And again, there is a spring there just to return it to the original position once power has been removed. And the final one, it's the same. Uh, Hager one, uh, this is a slightly different arrangement with the terminals. These are actually normally closed, which means that uh, when you apply power, the contacts then open. And this is apparently the one which has a fault as it's uh, apparently stuck in the open position, which obviously is uh, no good. And then look inside again, it's the same arrangement there. Got the coil uh, terminals in the actual case there. So permanently attached there, and those will just go onto the little springy tabs on either side. And then we've got the actual main contacts in the bottom. And similar in the middle here, again, just the coil, no actual capacitor on this one, like the uh, MEM ones. And it's going to be the same sort of sliding deal in the centre there, although that doesn't appear to slide uh, particularly well. So, so we just remove this and uh, have a look at the contacts underneath. Now the terminals in this one, of course, the other way round, so they normally close. So what we've got is the two uh, contacts on either side, which go to the terminals there, and then the contact bar is here, so underneath rather than on the top, as in the other one, and a little spring there. So without any force being applied, then of course those are in the closed position. And then when the coil is energised, of course, that will uh, press down on this piece here. And that was what will open the contact. So it's basically open there when it's energised, and then the spring just returns it to the normally closed position. And if I have a look at this side, uh, we can see what the problem here was, in that uh, the actual bar has slipped across. So now it's basically not actually meeting here, so that's going to become displaced somehow. So though the thing is still moving, it's not actually making contact to this end as the whole thing has uh, somehow managed to uh, shift its way across. Which is something which should obviously not happen. It may be able to be... Uh, yeah, the whole thing is just loose in there. It's not uh, actually being held in anymore at all. So uh, obviously whatever the uh, piece that held it in the central position is obviously worn or broken, causing it just to slip across and then not make contact on this side. And just have a look again at the other side, that's how it of course should be, so it's sort of properly centred in the middle there. So not totally clear what uh, actually broke there, because it seems that the only thing that holds it in place is the spring, and then there's a little actual impression sort of pressed in the middle of the contact so that it holds it uh, sort of laterally between the two. But as I saw, this obviously just slipped aside and uh, therefore doesn't work anymore. So that was obviously completely broken, but the uh, overheating thing, again, is uh, not good. That's not uh, too bad there, but again, it does crack relatively easily. So look there, it's an actual uh, real contactors, and say so I have done a video on how these things work in more detail, so have a look at that if you haven't already. And in terms of the overheating thing, this uh, may look quite bad, but bearing in mind these have been in use for 15 years, so uh, generally not a uh, big disaster. And again, these are actually broken, but that's only because I've basically poked my finger through them. I mean, that's uh, obviously not too, too desirable. Uh, one thing you can do if you're going to fit contactors and you're expecting them to be powered up for extended periods is uh, when you put them in the rack, rather than putting them all sort of next to each other, you can sort of put one in and then just put a blank module next to it so you get more airflow around the actual body of the thing, which may be something to consider if installing them in places where they're going to be powered on for many hours at a time. But uh, say, bearing in mind, that's after 15 years, so uh, not uh, entirely unexpected. So that's it for this time, and until next time, Thanks for watching.